Hi, I'm Phil Samney, a technical consultant for Altium. In this video, I'll show you how to lay out and route QFN packages. QFN packages, also known as quad flat, no lead, as the name implies, have no lead, so all the pads are hidden pretty much underneath the IC, so they're harder to assemble, solder, and also lay out and route. And I'd like to show you some guidelines how to improve your layout and routing for these types of packages. QFN packages are becoming more and more popular because they're small size, they're pretty common for Ethernet files, for USB files, even microcontrollers and so forth. So let's get started. If you'd like to give Altium Designer a try for yourself, please do check out the link in the description to get yourself a free trial of Altium Designer. Here's an example picture of the bottom side of a quad flat no lead package or QFN. Typically we'll have an outer perimeter or an outer ring of very small and fine pitch leads. So this could be a half a millimeter or 0.4 millimeter pitch. So rather small indeed. And we typically have an exposed pad, EP, which typically is connected to ground. Oftentimes, the outer perimeter of this quad flat no lead will not have ground pins, but sometimes it might do as well. QFNs can be used, for example, for physical layers, microcontrollers, and so forth, but they also come as switching regulators, for example. And the layout for switching regulators for QFNs is quite different to what we'll be exploring in this video. So in this video, we'll be looking at more a signal level IC rather than a power or switching IC. And I'll show you how to lay out one of these in this video. If we just look for some images of QFM packages, they don't have to necessarily be square. We get rectangular, we get various different pad pitches, shapes, and so on. Benefits using QFNs, of course, are their small size, reduced lead inductance, and so forth. So they are becoming more and more commonplace in today's electronics world. So it's important to know how to route and lay them out correctly. In this video, I'll be showing you, based on an example of a USB hub, or the very basics of a very simple USB hub IC, which is this USB 2514. As you see, this is not recommended for new designs, and this is purely an example to show you how, for example, to route power and signals for one of these QFN ICs. So I've created a very simple and basic schematic in Altium Designer for this USB hub. As you can see, I've actually not added any connectors or power supply of the sort. We're just going to be looking at and focusing on the QFN layout and routing. So I've made the schematic just to fit that. I have our main IC in the middle, which is this USB four port hub. We have an upstream or host USB differential pair and up to four differential pairs for devices. So to connect to this hub is also capable of doing power management. So overcurrent protection according to the USB specifications. But of course, we won't be using this in this example. What's important are all of these decoupling capacitors, which we'll need to fit around this rather small and tightly packed QFN package. So we have about 100 nanofarads, 04 or 2 size capacitors for each of these power pins. I also like to include C1 or a bulk decoupling capacitor close to the IC. We have some more sensitive circuitry on the right side here in forms of this crystal oscillator with this R6 feedback resistor, as well as C12 and C13, which are the load capacitors. We also have various filtering circuitry for the PLLs and so on, and some strapping pins which tell the USB hub which configuration it should be in without an external EEPROM. I've really created an empty schematic document in Altium Designer and imported these components. If we zoom in, we can see this very small QFN IC over here, which has a large ground pad underneath the IC, and around its perimeter, we have all of these pins closely packed, and the pitch here is 0.5 millimeters. So all of these components you see on the left side here, the crystal oscillators, decoupling capacitors, we somehow need to fit and also adhere to proper PCB design layout practices, for example, keeping decoupling capacitors close, loop areas small and so on. We need to make sure we do that with this constrained IC. We also have differential pairs around the IC. We have the sensitive crystal trace, which happens to be right next to differential pair. So an interesting choice for the IC design over here, putting these crystal traces right next to the differential pair. Pressing through on my keyboard, I can go to 3D view. So you can see the size and scale. These are 0402 resistors, and this is the QFN package. So all of these components we have to place sensibly and then root out for this QFN package. Before we get to that, however, let's just look at the board stack up in Altum Designer. We're going to design layer stack manager. I essentially made this into a four layer PCB, and this is at least the minimum layers I would go to for a design like this to make sure we have, we have tightly coupled planes to the signal layers. So we get good coupling and we minimize our field spread. This is a four layer board, as I said, top layer will be signal and bottom layer will be signal. My preferred stack up is have to have both inner layers be ground. So layer two is ground and layer three is ground, and then I root power. 
For fairly low speed designs such as this, routing power is typically absolutely fine. And I've done this many times successively with USB hubs and so forth. The reason I prefer signal ground ground signal is that we have type coupling between signal and ground on either side. We have proper return paths. And to be honest, making layer three or layer two, one of the internal planes power, we have such a thick core material here that we won't get any of the benefits of using power planes anyway, other than simplifying the routing process. I also need controlled impedance because USB differential pairs typically require about 90 ohms differential impedance. So I can go to the impedance tab at the bottom and I've set up 50 ohms for my single end impedance, which is 0.13 millimeters for this stack up. And I've set up also a differential pair impedance of 0.13 millimeters width with a certain trace space to give me an impedance of about 90 ohms. This is a really cool feature in Altum Designer to let me instantly calculate with a 2D field solver the impedances for given trace widths and spacings. So now we're ready pretty much to move over to layout. So let me replace my U1, which is my main QFN IC right in the middle. I'll also hide component designators for this, or I can click on the package and hide. We need to be concerned about what, what are critical parts, always with layout and routing. And to me, the first critical part, other than of course the signal traces, is getting proper decoupling of this board. Now with QFN packages, there are various ways of doing decoupling. Remember for decoupling, we want to place our decoupling capacitors as close as possible to the IC and minimize our loop areas. So our decoupling capacitors are essentially C1 to C7. Keep in mind that C1 just has to be close to the IC. It actually doesn't have to be close to any of these power pins. This is our bulk decoupling. However, C2 to C7 need to be close to these pins. So we have six 100 nanofarad capacitors and these need to be close to the relevant power pins. Keep in mind that VBUS detect and the inverted logic reset pin are also tied to 3.3 volts. And this can be misleading because it looks like this might be a power pin in the PCB layout, but these in fact are just signal pins. So for example, I have C2 over here and I have one of my power supply pins, which is pin five. Keep in mind, if I place this close, I also have to route in power to 3.3 volts as well, as well as routing out all of my USB hub differential pairs. So if I place it this close, where am I going to route my power in and how am I going to route out USB hub 3, 4, 2 and 1? So I have several options. My first option, if I'm doing a single layer assembly board, is move out my decoupling capacitor. And then, for example, route a trace from the power, fairly wide trace, out and then routed power from the left and then root in, for example, like so. So I assume I have my routed power coming into the pad along the side, then I have a thick trace and gradually getting thinner as I go into the thin pad of my QFM package. This gives me space if I want to, for example, root out my differential pair. So I have enough space to then root out my differential pair on either side. This would be one option. Keep in mind, I also need to include, of course, a via to my ground planes internally with a thick trace coming out the ground pad of this decoupling capacitor into a via placed close to the pad. In 3D, this would look something like this. So you can see I've actually increased the distance quite a bit to this 3.3 or connection. And then further out, I have this ground via over here. If we look somewhat from the side, you can see the ground pad of the QFN package is underneath. So we have all these ground connections. Then we're going through the IC 3.3 volts out of the decoupling capacitor through this ground via and this circle or this area here is our loop. And this is actually quite large. So this isn't the greatest decoupling in the world because you such, we have such a large loop area. And this is because we've had to create space to let these other signals pass. So let's see if we can maybe do a bit better. Another option, of course, is if your board house allows with your manufacturing tolerances is to just move this decoupling capacitor in a bit. So I could try and move this in significant, significantly. But I need to make sure this is still manufacturable and this could drive up the cost. If I have plain power, I could drop a via here as well. Another option is if, for example, you have a 3.3 volt connection and ground right next to it, and we happen to have a connection like so, like one of these connections over here where we have one power and one ground connection, our ideal capacitor connection is something, for example, like so, where I have equal spacing between 3.3 volts or power connection and ground. And then I could have some sort of structure like this, where I have my power and ground pads, then I have closely spaced vias for power and ground. And I could either root into this via or come with a trace if I have rooted power, for example, on the other side, and then I have my decoupling capacitor like so. I have closely spaced vias, which helps my inductance. And my capacitor, the ground pad is now much closer to the actual package. So in 3D view, we have a much better loop area, for example. This does come at a cost. If we're using the pads on the right side here as well, we have to have enough clearance that we can safely root out. 
keep in mind, we also have to place another decoupling capacitor at this 3.3 volt pin over here. So this can get quite difficult. Therefore, my actual preferred method of routing out QFNs, if I'm allowed or if I'm doing double-sided assembly, is to place the decoupling capacitor on the bottom. And let me show you exactly what I mean. The way I would do that, for example, with our 3.3 volt connection over here, is route directly out with a wide as possible trace. So pretty much as wide as the pad, short and wide, and then place a V at the end. You can see I'm using a 0.2 millimeter hole via with a 0.55 millimeter diameter, and this is a fairly small via. So for thicker boards, this might not even be manufacturable. So we should try and increase that to the tolerances we can, giving us enough clearance to these pads on the outer side. Then taking my decoupling capacitor and either changing layer like so, I can place this decoupling capacitor right underneath the IC. So I have my 3.3 volt via on the bottom side, then I have my decoupling capacitor and the ground connection is made directly underneath the pad of the QFN package. In the 3D view, I have my QFN package. I can route my traces out really nicely because I don't need to use this space with the decoupling capacitor. On the bottom side, I have my power connection into my decoupling capacitor, into the ground vias and up into the pad. So somewhat of a side view, and right now I'm looking basically in the PCB in a side view, I've got a very, very small loop area here. Yes, I have the inductance of the vias, which isn't great, of course, but this is certainly much better than the first approach we saw in terms of loop areas. Then from the pad, I would simply route out with very wide traces and also on the other side. Because we'll have multiple of these decoupling capacitors, we can actually do a copper pour on the bottom side with all these ground connections. What I always advise to do also for power vias is place the ground via as close as manufacturable and possible next to my signal power vias. Vias will come in pairs and to minimize V inductance, I have to have closely spaced vias. So I have ground and power spaced really close together and this will improve the inductance of this via. To me, this is a great technique because then I have very much space on the top side of the QFN package to actually root out all of these traces. So let me just root out the rest of this IC with these decoupling capacitors and show you the finished product. So now I've placed all the decoupling capacitors with vias underneath the IC. So I have all of my three volt and three round connections as well as these fil filtering capacitors as well, all placed in a similar way. So I have a very short and wide connection coming out and a via drilling down on the bottom side I've placed all my ground pads towards the center of the IC and the power around the perimeter. Keep in mind though, sometimes you'll have to move vias about. For example, if I just had this 3.3 volt via and this PLL filt via going straight out, I'd have trouble routing out my R bias connection over here. So sometimes, of course, you'll have to give yourself a bit more space and this should be enough to route out R bias. My larger bolt decoupling capacitor, I've just placed in the vicinity of this IC and haven't hooked that up yet. Anywhere close to the IC is pretty much fine. This isn't too critical. Don't forget also your ground vias next to power vias, for example, like so. On the topic of ground vias, of course, we have this exposed pad underneath the IC and that will require vias connecting into the ground plane below. This is not just for an electrical connection, but also thermal. Some of these ICs can, of course, generate quite a bit of heat that needs to be dissipated. I typically like to choose small vias for my ground pads so I minimize solder wicking or the solder paste flowing through these vias, which will of course ine inevitably happen unless these are plated over. But of course that will be more expensive to manufacture. So something like a 0.2 or 0.25 millimeter via is typically what I go for underneath these exposed pads. On the bottom side, we can see all these ground connections and now you could either route these up with traces or just do a copper pour underneath to link all of these together, of course, with some thermal relief to prevent tombstoning. Then all we have to do for the rain components, for example, this crystal over here, is drag that into place, and we can then simply root out from our pads. Now keep in mind, we need fairly thin traces, and that's why choosing a QFN package for your design will increase the specs of your PCB. So you have to be aware of that. And this way I can then just simply root out because I don't have any decoupling capacitors in the way. I simply have vias. So you can see this connection is actually really close. So what I can also do is delete that, then root out of the pad, go right a tiny bit, and then circumvent this via a tiny bit. So oftentimes I will try to go out, get away from vias, and as soon as I can, break away from traces that are close to each other so I minimize crosstalk and coupling. So I hope this video has given you some tips and tricks of how to route and lay out a QFM package Again, the most important trick being minimizing loop area, and you can do that by using double-sided assembly and placing components on the bottom and keeping your connections short and wide for power. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.